I gotta hand it to you, learning the intricacies of chain links is extremely hard. There are some quite simple things and some not quite simple things that need to be explained for you guys to understand in full detail how chain links work. So if you guys have won your fair portion of games without knowing this, then I have to commend you for it. It's a vital aspect into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Now for the players that want to win even more games, then this video just might be for you. Not only am I going to show you guys the intricacies of chain links, I'm going to show you some other things such as player priority and how turn structure works when using a chain link. I'm the Cali Effect and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and that notification bell because well, we just too strong. I also want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. Also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreon, Carlo Francisco. Welcome to the squad, man. Top dog, just keep getting bigger and bigger. Without further ado, I present to you how chain links work. This is really important for you competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players or the players that are trying to take the next step. makes Yu-Gi-Oh! a unique card game is its exclusivity. The ability to have certain mechanics in the game that don't seem to cross over to other card games. Chain links are definitely one of them. I tried to find another card game that allowed you to activate seamlessly or interact with your opponent seamlessly in between turns or any given time during the turn and I just couldn't find one. But chain links can often be referred to as a conversation. Like seriously, that's the best way to have a relation to how chain links work. Reason being is because I start off with a topic and then the friend of mine would like to build on that topic with something that he would introduce to his own. We keep building onto that topic until we have a resolution and then from there on out we sometimes actually go back to figure out what was the first thing that started that topic. At least that's how normal conversations should happen before the mumble rappers attack. Nonetheless, that's exactly how chain links work. You and your opponent will both activate card effects until one of you guys are satisfied with how card or with the chain order or do not wish to activate other card effects. From there, you take the very last card that was activated and resolve its effect first. And then you continue to go all the way down into the very first card resolves. Now there are plenty of interactions in chain links. Certain cards can be activated during certain parts of the chain link and certain cards can't be activated after a certain amount of chain links. Uh, I think that this is a pretty good time to start talking about spell speeds because that is um, really important to this Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Now I don't want to go too deep into spell speeds because that might be deserving of a video of its own. I'll try to get you guys as much information as possible without going off into a tangent because this is a video on chain links. I like to think of spell speeds as a chain of command. It's, it's actually exactly like that. There are three types of spell speeds. Spell speed one, spell speed two, and spell speed three. There is no spell speed four, ladies and gentlemen, but there are cards that cannot be responded to, which I guess would be a pseudo spell speed four, but I digress. Spell speed one cards are the most basic of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They typically can only be activated during your main phase, and you cannot respond to a spell speed one card with another spell speed one card. Spell speed two cards are a little different. They can be seamless activated at any given time as long as they fulfill their specific requirements and can only be responded to by spell speed 2 and higher. Now you can't respond a spell speed 2 card with a spell speed 1 card because spell speed 1 is below spell speed 2 rank. The same thing with spell speed 3. Spell Speed 3 is the Big Daddy Boss cards, and there are always counter trap cards. They can be used in response to Spell Speed 1 cards and Spell Speed 2 cards, but the only thing that can be used in response to Spell Speed 3 cards is another Spell Speed 3. That's right, after you use a Spell Speed 3, the only thing your opponent can use is another Spell Speed 3 in response. Think about it as when you're having your conversation and you drop a huge bomb on your opponent or your person that you're having a conversation with. I hope that everybody that you have a conversation conversation with isn't your opponent, but you drop a huge bomb into you guys' debate, and the only thing that you can use to come back with is another bomb themselves. It has to be pretty juicy for them to even stay inside of that conversation. Now that you guys have uh, what spell speeds are, at least a bit of a grasp on how they work, let me know down below in the comment section as well as like this video if you want a full-fledged video on how spell speeds work and identifying what cards are spell speeds, I think that we can move forward into chain links. Now, it's 
rather simple because I pretty much already explained it to you, but let me actually give you a little bit into another preview of a video because that's how complicated chain links can be. Player priority. Player priority is a rather interesting thing because a lot of people use it and don't even understand that they're using it. Let's start off with our turn structure because that could be another video, but it's the best way to explain player priority. I draw a card in my draw phase, and if you guys didn't know, every time you leave a phase, you have to declare you're leaving your phase, and your opponent has a chance or an opportunity to activate a card during that phase. So I draw a card, and then I'm ending my draw phase. My opponent has an opportunity to activate a card there. We go into my standby phase, and I decide not to activate any cards in my standby phase. My opponent then again has another opportunity to activate a card in the standby phase. When we enter our main phase, it gets a little bit different, because the moment that we enter our main phase, I have player priority. My opponent can't do a damn thing until either A, I activate a card, or B, proceed to end my main phase. Now, the draw phase and the standby phase have that exact same rule set, but let's face it. It's different. Your main phase is the meat and potatoes of your turn. It's gonna be where you activate the most of card effects. Now, there are quite a few interactions that you can do that don't start a chain whatsoever. Normal summoning a monster or setting a monster does not start a chain. Attacking with the monster or special summoning a monster that does not activate its effect of special summon does not start a chain either. You guys wanna know monsters, the difference between monsters that don't activate and do? Click on this video right here. Those cards may not start a chain, but your opponent might have a response to it. And that's exactly where chain links can come in. Allow me to explain how chain links work in depth so you guys can get more accustomed to it. But even more importantly, we're gonna build our way up so you guys can understand the more intricate parts as well as being able to manipulate them to your advantage. I'm gonna start off my turn in my main phase because that's where you kinda wanna do your cards by normal summoning Injection Fairy Lily to my side of the field. Now, normal summoning, again, does not start a chain, but my opponent has the ability to respond to it by activating cards of his own, and he's gonna decide to do so by using Torrental Tribute. Now, player priority passes back to me, and I'm allowed to respond to the Torrental Tribute. If I don't, I pass priority back to my opponent, and then they can activate another card, possibly Forbidden Lance to save their monsters and destroy all of my own. My Injection Fairy Lily will be in peril. In this particular situation, I'm actually going to have a response. I'm going to use Trap Stun as Chain Link 2 to Torrental Tribute. That's right, Torrental Tribute is Chain Link 1 because the normal summon doesn't start a chain in itself. So, Trap Stun would be used if this chain were to resolve to negate all trap cards on the field, and seeing that Torrental Tribute is a trap card, it would resolve what I would affect. But my opponent has another card to activate in Seven Tools of the Bandit. Now, Seven Tools of the Bandit is a Spell Speed 3 card, and we've only been using Spell Speed 2 cards Trap Stun, Torrental Tribute. Now, after Seven Tools of the Bandit, the only thing that I can respond with is another Spell Speed 3 card of its own. And it just so happens that I'm the King of Games, I have a Spell Speed 3 card to activate. I'm going to use Solemn Judgment on that Seven Tools of Bandit, and now we can resolve our chain links backwards. Solemn Solemn Judgment, or well, now I pass priority back to my opponent. If they choose not to activate any other Spell Speed 3 cards, because now since we've activated Counter Trap cards, that's the only cards we can activate, Chains will resolve backwards. Solemn Judgment will negate the Seven Tools of the Bandit. Seven Tools of the Bandit can't negate the Trap Stun. Trap Stun will negate all Trap cards on the field, effectively negating the Torrential Tribute. And then from there on out, all Trap cards can be activated. My Ejection Fairy Lily is saved. Yay! That is how chain links work on the base level. So allow me to get a little bit more intricate before we wrap up this video. Sometimes you can activate multiple card effects before your opponent has a response. This is simultaneous effects go on chain. If you guys don't know what it is, it's called Seacog. You can Google it. Seacog is basically when multiple effects activate at the same time and you get to place them on whatever chain link you wish. Let me give you guys a great example since we love burning abyss monsters. I'm going to summon Dante to my side of the field and then use its ability to detach one material to send the top three cards from my deck to my graveyard. Out of those three cards, Graph and Seer will both sit to my graveyard at the same time. Now, I would be able to activate both of these monsters' effects because they both have the if you can effect, 
which is for another video. Go ahead and click on that if you want to know the difference between cards that couldn't activate its effect at that time and cards that could. Now, I actually do get to decide on what order I get to use both of those card effects. I get to place one as Chain Link 1 and the other one as Chain Link 2. To be able to dodge cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, I would probably want to place Seer as Chain Link 2 and Graph as Chain Link 1. And seeing that my opponent can only respond to the most recent card in a Chain Link, they can't Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring the ca Graph Malbrank of the Burning Abyss. That is just one of the plenty of ways how you guys can abuse Seacog simultaneous effects go on chain to your advantage and what a player's been doing to dodge cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I think that that's a pretty good assumption to the base of how chain links work. Now, we probably could make an advanced video on how chain links work, but I'm pretty sure I covered so many aspects that you guys have a little less questions than answers than last time. I would love for you guys just to focus on the basis and then build your way up because Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very complicated game. And of course, I did leave you guys a couple of more questions possibly on how cards work. Let me know down below in the comment section what you would like to see first. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you didn't, let us know down below in the comment section what we could do to be better. Please like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.